Hi everyone, I'm Alex and I'm here today to talk about some tip with intriguing, how we can figure out the depths of tricky surfaces like glass and mirrors. So let's dive into our research work, learning the estimation for transparent and mirror surfaces. Before we delve into the specific, let's give a bit of context. In recent years, the estimation has seen remarkable progress and outstanding results across various applications. However, the achievements often fall short when it comes to transparent and mirror surfaces. For instance, this surface may introduce deceptive visual cues about thin geometry, which hinder the left right consistency needed by stereo algorithm to match the pixel. Moreover, the complexity of light reflection and refraction over uh, this kind of surfaces defies the basic principle of traditional depth sensor, which can no longer infer the correct depth. Also, in the end, uh, deep networks rely heavily on data for effective training. But in this case, we confronted with a shortage of annotated dataset that incorporate this kind of information for transparent and mirror surfaces. And so, this limited availability of relevant training data poses, of course, a significant challenge when applying deep learning approaches. So, now that we identified these challenges, let's talk about the approach. Our idea involves a simple device uh, because we're streaking the monocular depth estimation network by replacing transparent and mirror objects with, with virtual textures. This little trick enables the network to lose in depth information and essentially create annotation for us. The goal, of course, is to overcome the problem and feed then this generated annotation into a fine tuning pipeline to enhance the performance of existing state of the art models or some top surfaces. So, now that we discussed uh, our approach, let's see the key contribution of our research. These are the building blocks of the approach and they're essential for addressing the challenge we outlined. So, first of all, uh, we propose a robust crypto test strategy, and this strategy is the heart of our approach and allows us to create synthetic data information effectively to build a dataset. Next, we introduce a dedicated pipeline for fine tuning monocra data estimation network to end autom objects, and this step is crucial in enhancing the performance of state of the art model in the com context of tom surfaces and will be crucial also for the extension. There is uh, the last one, that okay, we present an extension tailored for stereo estimation method, specifically for stereo matching. And basically, this extension broadens the applicability, applicability of our approach and open up to new possibilities for that estimation in challenging scenarios. So let's dive now uh, into our um, monetization pipeline that is, as I said before, the crucial part of our approach. So the pipeline is designed to generate virtual data annotation for transparent and mirror surfaces using a monocular network that is pre-trained with the state of the art results. So here how it works. Given an RGB image and segmentation mask, we first identify the pixel that belongs to top surfaces. These areas are then painted with a random uniform color multiple times. The segmentation mask that we use can be added from a ground truth dataset such as Trans10K or inferred by neural network, in particular with the semantic segmentation neural network. After the painting, we process this region by using a pre-trained monocular network, generating virtual depth information for the surfaces. Of course, this is done multiple times, and then the virtual depths are aggregated to create a, to create a pseudo labeled dataset that, of course, will be more robust than the single iteration and the dataset itself is instrumental in fine-tuning the network. So now, let's take a look at some visual example or results. This image will provide a clear picture of how our approach perform in handling the tone surfaces. So uh, we employ the MIDAS and EPT, that are the most common uh, mono architecture nowadays that produce state of the other results, as backbone, and then we fine-tune this, uh, this network on MSD, a dataset containing mirrors, and Trans10K, that is another dataset containing um, transparent surfaces, and then tested on the booster train set, that basically is a laser that contains a mix of the two surfaces. So in the equities, we can see the comparison between the base model and the fine-tuned ones, either by employing the ground truth or by this dataset, or different masks by some uh, semantic segmentation networks. In each row, we can um, appreciate improvements on tom surfaces. For instance, in row 1, we can see how the lead before the fine tuning uh, lied on the table, while after the fine tuning uh, uh, is in between the, the frame of the lead, so the correct label. And also in row 2, we can see how the windows is separated correctly after the fine tuning. Uh, by being aligned to the plane of the wall. So now let's explore our distillation pipeline that is the extension, not real extension, of our approach 
tailored for standard estimation networks. So in this pipeline, we start uh, with a sterile image pair and a segmentation mask only for the left image. And our goal is to leverage the strength of both stereo and monochrome networks, since stereo networks are already, already really good in uh, uh, stimulated the depth uh, in uh, general surfaces while fail on tom objects uh, and uh, monoconduct uh, estimation networks uh, are fairly good in estimating depth uh, but not good as the stereo networks uh, but now they're really good on tom objects uh, after our strategy so uh, what we do is to uh, take in prediction from a pretending stereo network uh, and merge them with the virtual depth uh, obtained by our monocular fine-tuned network uh, and to create the merge disparity labels, we select values belonging to either tom surfaces from the monocular or stereo prediction, respectively. So we take the best of both worlds, essentially. These merge disparity labels are then used to fine tune the original stereo network, as we done in the previous case with the mon monocular networking. And this process helps enhance the network performance, specifically for handling tom objects in the stereo matching setup. So once again, we can see some visual examples. In this case, we employed the rough stereo and cross stereo, they are the, the equivalent of, uh, of Midas uh, and DPT for stereo, so the state of the art network I most use nowadays. We found you once again on all MST and Trust and K, and we test on the booster train set. And we can see also in this case uh, the, the comparison between the base model and the Fantine inversion, either by employing the ground truth or the third mask. Once again, we can see. Uh, huge improvements uh, after the fine tuning and in particular I want to highlight uh, row number three we can see there is there is a jar that after the fine tuning uh, is uh, reconstructed fairly well and it's important because in this case we have a non-planar uh, object so we can say the method is not overly tuned to estimate planar objects also in the fourth row uh, the lead uh, is reconstructed better after the fine tuning so the method works in general so now let's see some qualitative results uh, in the point cloud in this example in particular we have two basically plan uh, two, two planar scene basically uh, we can see how before the fine tuning the windows and the, and the window of the oven uh, at the points scattered uh, at a very long distance between the plane uh, in which they lie while after the fine tuning, uh, all the points lie in the same plane, also for the surfaces. And this is a good uh, uh, indicator that the method works really well after the fine tuning. So, as we conclude our presentation, let's discuss the key points uh, and implications of this research. First of all, we propose an effective methodology for three data estimation networks, uh, both mono and stereo, to deal also with uh, the challenges posed by these uh, tone surfaces. Our experiment demonstrated that these pipelines uh, significantly improves the performance of the models uh, when applied to tone objects, uh, even in the case uh, in which we have uh, extremely noisy proxy semantic annotation that derives from uh, semantic segmentation networks. Uh, and also these improvements uh, are also validated by uh, quantitative measures. You can see on the minute work there are a lot of tables about that, a lot of numbers. And then by leveraging the process of inpainting these surfaces in energy images, we can quickly generate virtual depth labels. So essentially that means that we can generate as big as we want uh, and also generalize on in future on objects on the wild, let's take photos on the wild. So you can take a photo with your telephone and use these pipelines. And of, of course, these labels serve as a valuable resource for fine tuning both Panacor and Stereo Networks, as we saw before. So, looking forward, a promising direction for future research would be to extend uh, this technique to insta-segmentation mask, since this extension could provide us with better visual depth maps, especially when multiple top objects coexist in the same scene and also overlap. So that's it, thanks for the passion, and uh, I also want to thank my wonderful teams, and that's it. Bye.